Welcome back. It's actually been quite a while since I've filmed. I've had some pre-recorded videos, so you might not have noticed, but I've been not filming for a while. I was out in California visiting my dad and yeah, so I'm happy to be back. It's kind of like getting back into the swing of things is always a little difficult, but I always look forward to filming. So now that I've told you things that you don't care about, let's get into the thing you do care about, which is, ta-da! Notorium Dew Glow. So this is the Dew Glow Moisturizer SPF 50. I will say right off the bat, Moisturizer SPF, very accurate. If you have more oily skin or you don't really like that like dewy, overly kind of glowy look, this is just not it. Not for you, not one bit. But if that is something you're interested in, stick around, we're gonna get into it right now. I thought I would zoom in just a little bit more because you know, we wanna see it applied, right? Okay, let's go over the specs real quick. This is from Naturium, obviously. It retails for $22 and you get 1.7 fluid ounces or 50 milliliters. Right now, I know it's available in the US. Naturium is kind of like broadening their grasp on the skincare world. So I'm not sure if it's available in other countries, but if it's not now, I have a feeling it will be soon because like I said, they're just kind of like tentacles going out into the world. Whether you love Naturium or hate them, that's kind of what it is. I said it retails for $22. I think that's a really big selling point. Naturium is notoriously affordable. I think of them like kind of like wanting to be luxury skincare brand, but at like target prices. And I really enjoy that. I think they have a lot of good products, a lot of not so great products. And I, I have the video, it's coming, best, worst, mediocre of Naturium. I'm gonna go through them all. I've just been gone for a while, so I'm kind of behind. <laughs> anyway. Let's get into this. I've said that five times now. This is a chemical or organic sunscreen, which means it's not mineral. It has multiple filters. They're all US filters. That's the downside. They're not using any new filters that are available outside of the US. So those filters are homosalate 10%, octosalate 5%, and avobenzone 3%. Sometimes it depends on the different filters, and especially if they're American filters. So in terms of eye sting, people tend to get eye sting more for a chemical sunscreen versus a mineral sunscreen. And it's not always clear cut. Some people get it from certain filters. Some people get it when a filter is at a certain percentage or more. It's very hard to know. It's very hard to tell, but we're gonna test that out. <laughs> so let's get into it. I wanna read what it says on their website real quick though because I do like to say or see what they say and then see if I see the same thing. So our daily moisturizing sunscreen is formulated with organic chemical sunscreen filters that apply visibly on all skill, invisibly. I'm sorry, that would be terrible <laughs> if they said it applies visibly on all skin tones. That's not what you want. To provide broad spectrum SPF 50, PA plus 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 four pluses. That's great. This is something that is not as common in the US, the PA rating, it's for UVA filters and protection. And I'm glad to see that they are doing that. And I'm glad to see that it has four pluses. That is the highest amount that you can get. So the best UVA protection. Okay, while leaving a dewy radiant finish, niacinamide and ethyl ascorbic acid are included to help visibly improve the look of the complexion. That's a little weird, but I get what they're trying to say. Basically, they have like a variation of vitamin C serum and then niacinamide, which helps reduce the size of pores or the appearance of pores. So those kind of track, but that was just worded kind of oddly. Okay, in terms of ingredients, um, pretty standard. You know, I went through the active ingredients, but then the ones that stick out to me are they have argan oil in here. We've got bisabolol, which is one of the funniest words ever. But what I'm seeing from the non-functional ingredients, like a functional ingredient is exactly what it sounds like. It's something maybe that helps emulsify the oil and water, maybe gives it like the film or helps it to have a film forming property. Um, but the ones that are like non-functional in my opinion are things like oils and butters and active ingredients or even um, extracts and whatnot. And this one just has a lot, not a lot, but some pretty heavy oils and butters. So that kind of tracks with the moisturizing property and marketing ploy or whatever you want to call it. So yeah. Okay. I think it's time to put it on my face because it's just that time. So they do say on the website, a quarter of a teaspoon for your face and your neck, which is great to see. I love that. And we're going to do exactly that. So I'm going to squeeze it out into here. I will tell you that it's a rather thick, like cream. And you'll see that once I start applying it, it's pretty heavy. Okay, 
So that's our quarter of a teaspoon. Also, I did an arm workout and I like don't think I can raise my arms above my head right now. So when I say thick, I really do mean it. It's not going anywhere. Like there's no running. It feels like a very heavy moisturizer cream. So. So no cast whatsoever. You're not gonna have a cast because it is a chemical sunscreen and obviously I don't think they would have made one that had any kind of cast. I mean, there are chemical sunscreens out there that do have a cast, but I'm like, why? Like, just why? But this one does not have a cast and it's not gonna have a cast on any skin tone. It doesn't take that long to rub in. I did see one comment on the Naturium website where I was looking saying like, this took so long to rub in. I don't think that's actually true. Like, unless you're just, maybe if you like squeeze out half a tube and try to put it on at once, but I've not ever had a hard time and I've worn this for about a week now. And as you can tell, I've got a nice glowy look to myself. It feels like a heavy moisturizer and it doesn't ever really sink in, but that's also maybe my skin type. I have more normal combination, kind of like vacillates when the weather's warm, it's more oily when it's dry, it's a little drier, but for the most part, I would say normal. So if you do have more oily skin, this is probably not the one for you. I was actually pretty impressed on their website. It said it's for dry, to combo skin so usually they just say it's for everybody even though it's not because they just want to sell it to everybody this one they actually were pretty honest and said like no it's not for oily skin so i'm gonna let it sit it's not gonna go anywhere but i do like to let it sit for five minutes and i forgot to mention i don't have anything else on i don't put any other skincare on when i'm testing and reviewing a sunscreen for you guys but that doesn't mean you can't put moisturizer on now me personally i would not put a moisturizer on underneath this this is a two-in-one for me but I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna let it sit and I'll come back in five minutes. Okay, it's been more than five minutes, but I did wanna just put some makeup on because I thought, you know, one of the things that they kind of hype this up as is a really good sunscreen slash moisturizer for under makeup. And while I didn't put like an actual foundation or tinted moisturizer because it's Sunday and I just didn't feel like that, wow, my hair is so frizzy. It's so humid out today. I did put concealer kind of like all over my face and I powdered as well. And I can tell you, it is a beautiful base for your makeup. If you like a glowy look, I mean, I can still powder over it. Like let's take the Charlotte Tilbury. Let's take the Charlotte Tilbury and just do a little bit more powder, maybe like right there and right there. And yeah, I haven't had any pilling. I haven't had any weirdness. Just kind of a nice base for your makeup. And it does have the glow, like you can get the glow to last. You can also powder it down so it's not as glowy. So it seems like a good in between if that's something you're looking for. Now, let's talk about eye sting because this is a weird product. The first few times I wore it, I had like pretty, I wouldn't say the worst eye sting, but it wasn't pleasant. It was more like just like watery eyes and I just kept rubbing and rubbing and it was not fun. But today, and you guys saw me, I put it all over my eyes. I haven't had anything, so I'm not really sure. I'm not gonna say it's 100% eye sting. Like there are some out there that you're just like, whoever wears it, no matter how close they get to their eye, they get eye sting. This one, it's kind of hard to tell. And I don't know if it's gonna sting your eyes. Obviously, I don't know if any sunscreen is gonna sting your eyes but I have had it sting and today I have not, so I can't really tell. I would just caution you if you know that you tend to have eye sting, this is probably, I mean, it, it could not sting, but it might sting. So that is something to consider. But overall, do I like it? I think I do. Will I continue to wear it, like reach for it nonstop? 
Probably not. For me, this is going to be a winter moisturizer slash sunscreen. I'm never going to be able to wear this in the summer. I live in a hot, humid climate. It's just too much for me. And I do like it. I just don't think it's like that revolutionary. <laughs> I don't know. I just think of uh, like all of like the La Roche Posay, like some of these, especially more European brands or Japanese or Korean that kind of are doing the same thing. And this is not so, so revolutionary. I do like that it's $22. I hope that it'll be at Target soon. It just makes it more accessible to everybody. But would I say like this is the most unique thing I've ever seen that's come out this year? No, absolutely not. I think if you really like what this offers, like A, you like Naturium, B, you like a glowy chemical sunscreen, and C, I guess you like the price point, which I think we all kind of do, then yeah, you could maybe try it out. Maybe put it in your cart if you have some already, but you're looking for something in the future, maybe put it in your cart. But if it doesn't check all those boxes and like those aren't really important things to you, I would say pass on it. I just don't think it's that spectacular again. I don't have anything like wrong with it. So I'm not trying to, you know, blame the brand or tell you that this is the most horrible thing. I just think it's another sunscreen and it's a good option, but it's not the only one. And don't rush out and get it. But yeah. So what do you think? Do you like the glowy look? Are you like kind of over it? What are we thinking? For me personally, I like it. I like a two-in-one. This is a nice two-in-one, but it's not my favorite of all time. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.